is going on ladies and gentlemen? AJ Good here at the House of Masks and it had to be done and I should be the one to do it. So, for those of you that don't know me, allow me to introduce myself. My name is AJ Good and this is my channel, the House of Masks. I have the largest and most extensive Slipknot mask collection in the world, but I don't just collect Slipknot masks. I have everything from Slipknot to Michael Myers to stage used guar and portal items, vintage movie monsters and gas masks, pretty much anything mask related that you can think of. My collection is one of, if not the largest, private mask collection in the world. I showcase all of those things and more through this channel, and right now I'm setting out to do something that's never actually been done. Many, many cringeworthy sites such as Loudwire have done articles listed as the definitive Slipknot mask history, but they have proven to know as much about Slipknot masks as a semi-retarded buffalo. So I am here to fix that. We are setting out to once and for all do the definitive definitive Slipknot mask history, one member at a time, starting today with Sid Wilson. So every single one of these episodes will be dedicated to listing in as much detail as possible every single Slipknot mask worn by said member, from the first mask to the current mask. This list will not include oddball masks as there will be an entire oddball mask video when all is said and done. What is an oddball mask? Good question. It is simply a mask that was not regularly used by a band member, not used during something Slipknot related, or used by someone else for some other reason, such as a music video, etc. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing. I make mask related content almost every single day, and I am getting close to 100,000 subscribers, so I would appreciate you hitting that motherfucking button. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into the first list. We are doing the filth epitome, number zero, Mr. Sid Wilson. Let's go. All right, so before we get into this list, I did just want to give a shout out to my buddy, Nico. Uh, his website actually inspired me to make this video and I am using a lot of the photos from his website. So if you guys would like to go check his website out, it is slipknothistory.com, pretty fucking simple. He's got everything you could ever wanna know about the masks and jumpsuits that were worn by Slipknot on this website. And it is just the website that we have needed for a very long time and Nico finally put it together. So I would highly recommend going and checking it out if you're into this type of video. We will be starting with the self-titled mask Masks, of course, working our way through Iowa, then Volume 3, All Hope is Gone, Point 5, and finally the latest album, We Are Not Your Kind. So, Sid's first mask that we know of is the British Civilian Duty Gas Mask. This is pretty common knowledge. I would say that when you think about Sid Wilson, you think about this mask. It is, of course, just a BCD with the lenses, filter, and nose flap removed, and it has been restrapped with that signature BDSM Slipknot style strapping, and there were quite a few few variants of this BCD worn on the self-titled era. Moving on to another BCD, we see Sid Wilson doing a signing. He has a BCD with the nose flapper valve still attached as well as the front face filter, and it does not look like it has been restrapped. I am going to assume that a fan just gave him this at a signing and he threw it on as is, which is pretty cool and something that happened quite often with Sid during the self-titled in Iowa eras. Next up, we have the Israeli number four gas mask. This is about as simple as it gets. It has has the original strapping and the only thing different with this mask is that the lenses have been removed. Most of Sid's self-titled gas masks had the lenses removed and this was due to the fact that it was a ventilation problem and they probably fogged up pretty good while he was performing. So he just took the lenses out, all of a sudden he can see and breathe better. Pretty simple stuff. Next up we have the SHMS gas mask, commonly known in the community as the white monkey because some fucking idiot named Corey Palmer named it that way back in the day and now a bunch of noobs call it the white monkey and I wish that this would end. This is an SCHMS gas mask. It is a Russian gas mask and that is that. We cannot tell from this photo if Sid still had the lenses in but I'm going to assume that he did not. It is super easy to remove the lenses from this mask so if he had taken them out of BCDs I'm sure that as soon as he got this mask, he took the lenses out. Next up, we have yet another SCHMS gas mask, but this is the only photo where you can see the hose still attached to the mask, so I'm assuming that he threw it on there towards the end of this 
mask's career, and you can later see him during Iowa with this mask as a prop. And that prop still has the hose attached as well as another gas mask glued to this SCHMS. And I'm sure that you guys will see that in the oddball video. I will not be putting that mask in this video because Sid never actually wore it the way that it was. It was more of a prop than a mask. Next up, we have another SCHMS gas mask. And as you can tell, this one is not only weathered, but appears to be grayer, therefore leading us to believe that this is a different mask entirely. And this one has a strap along the backside, which reminds me about the time that your mom got a strap on from the backside. Not really sure why this mask needed a strap, but he did add a leather strap to this mask. And I don't know if you've ever worn one of these, but they stay on pretty tight. So I honestly have no idea why that strap is there. Next up, we have the Canadian C3 gas mask only seen in two photo shoots. And it does not appear that this mask was restrapped. This is one out of the two C3s that he wore. This one is what we refer to as the triangle nose because clearly you can see a little triangle indentation on the nose there. I am not sure why he didn't wear this mask more often. Next up, we have the second Canadian C3 gas mask. This is what we refer to as the bump nose. And fun fact, this is my personal favorite Sid Wilson mask of all time. I just really like the way that it looks, especially with that added strapping. Clearly, he removed the front face filter as well as the lenses. And with this mask, he really started to experiment with the paint jobs. They weren't just black anymore. He was doing different colors, different patterns, and it just looked really, really cool. So next up, we have the S10 gas mask, and this one still does have the lenses intact. Not sure why. Maybe this was just the first photo shoot with it because I swear that I've seen it without lenses as well. This mask was not restrapped. There was nothing fancy done. It was just the standard gas mask with no attached filters. Next up, we have yet another S10 gas mask. I am assuming that a fan gave this to Sid at a signing because once again, it includes the filter. Next up, we have the N10 gas mask. This is the brother mask to the S10. And this is basically the military version version of the S10, whereas the S10 was for civilians. And the only thing that Sid has done here is removed the lenses as well as the front mouthpiece cover. Next up, we have the M9A1 gas mask. This is a very typical old US gas mask, and Sid actually wore it quite a bit. I don't think people realize that Sid wore this as much as he did, as well as the next M9A1 gas mask. And the only difference with this one is that the filter side has been put onto the opposite side as the one before and the right lens cover of the mask has been removed as well as the lenses themselves. Here we have the AT Akron Toussaint slash La France Fireman's Respirator. This is one of the trickier masks to find if you are a Slipknot mask collector because these things really just don't exist anymore. Definitely one of my favorite Sid masks as it always reminds me of the bathtub scene from Spit It Out and for some reason I just absolutely love that. Here we have the Czech M10M gas mask and there is nothing fancy about this one. It just has the front cover removed as well as the lenses busted out. No restrapping or anything fancy. Here we have the M17A1 gas mask. Once again, nothing fancy done with this mask. The front cover has been removed again, but we cannot tell about the lenses and it does not appear to have been restrapped. Here we have the PDFD gas mask. This is again, one of my favorite Sid looks. It is just super, super weird. On top of having the lenses removed as well as being restrapped, this mask also has some added tubing to give it a strange look, as well as a nose piece that came from another gas mask. Here we have the French ANP M51 gas mask. This is the same mask that Sid was wearing in the self-titled album booklet, but the filter below the chin has been removed and it appears that there has been some face paint smudged all over the mask. Here we have the US Navy MKIV gas mask, another one of my favorites because we never really saw Sid wear it. He did not ever wear this thing live. I do believe that it was only used for one photo shoot and it is a very, very old gas mask. I do not believe that there are any alterations done to this mask, meaning it was not restrapped, the lenses were left intact, and the filter was still attached to the mask. Here we have the SR6 gas mask. I know that I keep saying this, but again, this is one of my favorite Sid Wilson looks. Something about this mask is just very odd and almost sinister, and I wish that we would have seen it worn more often. 
Here we have the mystery dynamo gas mask, and the reason that we call this the mystery dynamo gas mask is because this appears to be a BCD, but there are some changes to the mask that we have never seen on a BCD before. This mask sits much closer to the face than a regular BCD. The mouth holer is bigger than a regular BCD, and it also appears to have different seam lines and other details that don't match up with any known BCD. This mask had the filter removed, the lenses removed, and was restrapped. Here we have the British Light Anti-Gas Respirator MK2. Holy shit, what a name. This gas mask appears to be a Canadian C3 from first look, but actual gas mask collectors have identified this piece to be a lag MK2. And now we have yet another Israeli on the list. This is the Israeli N4 gas mask with drinking tube still intact. As you can tell, there are some slight differences from this mask and the original Israeli that we showed off. You can see the drinking tube on the side there, as well as no white front piece like the original. And I do believe that Sid was given this mask during the show by a fan because there are only a couple photos that exist of him wearing it and it's still pretty stock, which was not a common thing for Sid's self-titled gas masks. The fact that he can also be seen wearing another gas mask at Leeds during most of the photos also points to this being a fan-given mask. Wow, we are all the way through all of the self-titled variants already. How'd I end up in this onesie? But it looks like the only thing to do now is to go to Iowa. So, let's go to Iowa. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start off in Sid's Iowa masks with probably the most notorious or well-known Iowa mask from Sid, and that is the Iowa Bone Skull. And he actually had two different versions of this. This one I always refer to as the pot leaf version because on the forehead, it looks like there is the shape of a pot leaf, and we all know that Sid is a big stoner. So it just makes sense to me that he would have probably asked for a subtle little pot leaf on his mask, and I do think that that's what it is. So that is what I call the pot leaf bone Iowa. Next up we have the tan bone Iowa and this is a much more bone collared version, a lot less yellowing and uh, no subtle little imagery or anything there. After that we have the all black bone Iowa and this is one of my favorites because there's really nothing to it but it still works for some reason. This is literally the same exact mask as the last two. It just is a flat black paint job but he did do some stuff with this mask from time to time such as a face painted upside down cross on the forehead. Uh, moving along to the last Bone Iowa on the list, we have the black version with painted on white teeth, and I think that this was my favorite for the longest time just due to the Rolling Stone cover. I really, really liked the face paint that he had on, and I liked all of the different sets of teeth, and I just thought that it was really, really neat. So this is the last of the sculpted masks for Sid from the Iowa era. The rest that you are going to see are all gas masks. So the first gas mask on the Iowa list is going to be a mask that we've actually already seen on the self-titled list and that is the C3. Now as you can see here it is heavily weathered. There is lots and lots of white face paint on it but it is the exact same mask that we saw in the self-titled era and he only wore it during Iowa for these promo shots. So I do believe that there are only two photos of Sid wearing this during the Iowa era unless I'm being a complete fucking idiot and just not remembering something obvious. Next up we have the Polish SR1 gas mask and this is is heavily converted. Not only is it painted red, but it is completely stripped of almost every single thing that made it a gas mask. The filters and hose connections have been removed, the nose has been cut out, the lenses have been removed, and it has been restrapped, and you would not believe what this mask looked like when it was put together. Now Sid actually had two versions of this. It was the same mask, but he later added a new top strap, and that top strap is actually made out of the sleeves of one of his jumpsuits. So the Iowa suits had lots of weird buckles and stuff, and this is literally just one of those buckles added to the mask. Coming back to yet another self-titled mask, we actually see the N10 again, but this time there is a piece missing from the mouth, and Sid was definitely well into experimenting with different face paints by this point, which become even even more prominent and stand outish when he removes the mouthpiece from the mask entirely. Now not only do we get to see a good portion of his eyes, but we also get to see his mouth. So basically his entire face is exposed and we get to see a lot of cool face paint designs with this intent. 
Next up, we have the German MSA Hour 3S gas mask, and this was only worn for one show and one signing, and I do believe that they were at the same time. Now, I've actually seen photos of Sid at this same exact signing with the same exact suit and the same exact face paint, but he was sporting his N10, so if I had to take my best guess, a fan probably gave him this gas mask during the signing, and he decided to throw it on a little bit later for a portion of the show, like he has done in the past. Now, I totally understand why Sid didn't wear this mask more often. It definitely wouldn't be the easiest to wear during a live performance, but it does look cool, and I wish that we would have seen a little more of it. Moving right along to yet another self-titled mask, we are revisiting the Israeli in 4 mask. Here we have a pretty butchered mask. If I had to take my best guess here, it would be the mask that he was given at the Leeds Festival with the drinking tube, and as you can see from this photo, it is pretty destroyed. It looks like he cut the front end entirely, but you can still see what appears to be that drinking tube on the mask and I can't quite tell but it looks like Sid is wearing a spiked collar but there's a good chance that those spikes are actually in the mask. Unfortunately this is the only photo that we have to go off of for this mask and it is about as bad as they come so we just have to make do with what we can and take our best guesses here. Moving right along with the Israeli masks, we have yet another Israeli in 4 gas mask, and this one has been completely destroyed. There is a good chance that it is the mask from the last photo, but Sid just went ahead and continued cutting it. And what we have here is basically an eye patch. The straps have been repositioned, and the mask has just been completely cut, basically only covering a portion of his forehead. As you can see, he's got some weird net covering most of his head, and his face is completely face painted. He did wear this for a few shows, including the Reading slash Leeds Festival and a few shows after. People still get tripped up on this mask thinking that they've found something new even though really good footage and really good photos have been on the internet for about 18 years now. And moving along yet again we have another Israeli on the list and this is actually the most recent to be discovered and if you guys watch my channel often you'll know that we did this conversion not too long ago. As I mentioned this is another Israeli but it seems to have some crazy weird goth spikes literally all all over the mask. If I had to guess, yet again, you guessed it, I would say that a fan gave this mask to Sid and he threw it on for a portion of the concert. Once again, unfortunately, these are the best pictures that we have to go off of and they are actually just screen grabs from a random fan shot video on YouTube, but it's better than nothing, I guess. Holy hot dog farts. Can you believe that we're already all the way through self-titled and Iowa? That means we're almost halfway done with this entire list. Only four album cycles left to go. Let's get into volume three. All right, ladies and genitalia, I welcome you to the Volume 3 era of Sid Wilson's Masks, and we are going to start off with this crazy Version 1 Volume 3 skull, and as you can tell, it does look a little strange. It doesn't look like your typical skull mask. This one always reminded me of a Transformer, which makes sense because Sid is a big-time Transformers fan, and I don't really know what exactly about it says Transformer to me, but there's just something about it that says Transformers to me. So, we have the V1 skull. This one is nice and clean, just looks like some regular bone. It has most of the teeth intact, but then we move along, and it is far, far dirtier and is missing quite a few teeth in comparison to the last variation. We move along, and it is now as dirty as it could possibly get and only has three teeth left intact on the mask. And just when you think it couldn't get any worse, he loses yet another tooth. Now we have two teeth. Holy shit, we're down to one tooth. And obviously the mask is getting dirtier and dirtier. So here is the same skull mask with all of the teeth missing and now you can see that he has completely removed the bottom jaw. There is absolutely no bottom to this mask so it is basically a half mask but all of these versions have been the same mask. Here we have the same mask but a different copy. This is a different version of the mask. It had a slightly different paint job as well as some fangs rather than regular acrylic teeth. This one had full-on spiked metal fangs. Definitely a weird look, never seen live, only seen for promotional pictures, most notably the Houdini Mansion photo shoot. Here we have what we call the V2 skull. This is because this was a completely different sculpt, looked almost nothing like the other mask aside for the fact that they were both skulls. This one is much more humanoid and just basically looks like a regular skull mask. Now, as you can tell, this mask went through some changes as well. Pretty much all Slipknot masks weather over time and this one is definitely no exception. As you can see here, 
it is a darker paint job and there is a lot more weathering going on on the face. And this brings me to one of my favorite things that Sid ever did. This is the cast of Sid's face over his actual skull mask and he would rip this thing off during live shows. And wow, do new Slipknot fans love to compare Sid's current We Are Not Your Kind mask to this Volume 3 mask, saying that we've already gotten the mask that Sid is wearing for We Are Not Your Kind. No, this mask was literally worn for maybe two minutes of the shows and ripped off. It was not animatronic. It did not have the same facial features, the same movements, or pretty much the same anything as Sid's We Are Not Your Kind mask. So yes, the concept is the same. It is Sid's face as a mask, but it is completely different than what we have going on in the modern time. Next up, we have the return of the British civilian duty gas mask. He wore this live at the Grammys in 2005, and as you can see there, he's got a little suit, little top hat, but still the same old basic self-titled BCD mask. The next year at the Grammys, Sid actually wore another cast of his face, and as you can see, this one is latex and painted gray like a death mask. Speaking of death masks, next up we have the Sid Wilson death masks, and as you guys may or may not remember, Slipknot did a full run of these during these Volume 3 era, and during their set, when they would play Vermilion, they would switch to these masks. I am personally a fan of these masks. I think it was very, very cool, something different to look at, and a lot of them, like Joey, had a very strange and sinister look. So these masks were literally just plastic pools of their actual faces, the literal definition of a death mask. Oh shit. Uh, um, sorry about that. I uh, didn't think we'd get through that that quickly, but we did. So now we are officially halfway through this list, and that means that All Hope is Gone is up next. Let's go. Haha, -ha. not starting out with the mask you thought I was going to, did I? Yep, no robots yet. We gotta go with the All Hope Is Gone promo purgatory masks. And these are some giant, weird, paper mache masks that Slipknot used for some promo material. They used them in photos and videos, and it was just a really, really strange thing. I'm not even sure what to say about these pieces. But a mask is a mask, so on the list it goes. Next up, we have the Sid Wilson All Hope Is Gone mask, and I'm not sure what to say about this one either. It was definitely his weirdest mask yet. Definitely Transformers inspired. And this mask had a lot going on. It was animatronic, the mouth open and closed. You couldn't see Sid's eyes due to some lenses. Sometimes there were even lights involved. Next up, we have about the same mask. The only difference is that there has been a battery pack mounted to the top of the mask that sat on Sid's head. Here we have the same mask with a slight change. There had been a mod made to this mask, and that is if you look directly under the eyes, you can see that those holes have now been drilled out. They are no longer just a part of the sculpt and paint job. They are actually drilled all the way through. I assume that this is due to some sort of fog slash ventilation system. I don't know if those lenses were getting foggy on the inside, or if Sid just wanted to add even more breathing room to the mask. But again, a difference is a difference. A modification is a modification, so this is on the list. Next up, we have what we refer to as the stunt version of the mask. This was commonly used during live shows and other little ventures that Sid would get into. And the reason that we call this the stunt mask is because there are absolutely no electronics. The eyebrows did not go up and down. There were never any lights on this version. The only thing that moved was the mouth, and that was because it moved with Sid's jaws. There were no electronics that accompanied this mask whatsoever. I went back and forth on whether or not to add this into the video, but I think I'm going to go ahead and add it in. And the reason I went back and forth was because there were some other headgear with the self-titled and Iowa masks that I did not include because I did not feel like they were a big deal. I didn't feel that they technically changed the mask, but I do feel that this one deserves to be on the list. So here we go. We have the regular Sid Wilson All Hope Is Gone mask with the matching Transformers helmet and not a whole lot needs to be said about this one. It's just really fucking cool looking. All right, so I just want to take a quick second to clear up some confusion that may be about to happen to some of the viewers here. A lot of people are going to see these next masks and think, wow, those aren't All Hope Is Gone masks, but yes, they technically are. As long as I've been in this hobby, eras have gone from album to album, meaning everything between self-titled and Iowa is the self-titled era. Everything between Iowa and Volume 3 is Iowa era. Everything between Volume 3 and All Hope Is Gone is Volume 3 and so on 
on and so forth. Meaning, yes, Slipknot did do some memorial shows and even released a Greatest Hits album, but that record was all music from other albums. So yes, we are still in the All Hope Is Gone era, and until Slipknot released Point Five, we were in the All Hope Is Gone era. I've seen some people online say, <laughs> it's not All Hope Is Gone, that's antennas to hell. And that's a cool thought, 14 year old. But listen to the experts here. Any veteran mask collector is going to tell you that these are all Hope Is Gone masks. Good? Good. So let's hop back in, and yes, once again we have another self-titled style mask. And the reason that I call this a self-titled style mask and not a self-titled mask is because I don't believe that this exact copy was ever worn during the self-titled era. Sid wore this for those memorial shows such as Sonosphere, and I believe that it is a new BCD that the band had someone find and restrap for Sid to wear because most of the members did throwback looks for those shows. Moving along, we have the same mask but with all of of the metal pieces except for the nose removed. As you can see, the lenses from the eyes are gone and it gives the mask a really weird look and also stretches with Sid's face a little different than normal. And we might as well go ahead and talk about the helmet that Sid is wearing. Even though I wouldn't really include it on this list, it's not a part of the mask, nor does it really change the mask, making it a different variation or anything. But yes, Sid wore a helmet with this mask when he was doing the crowd surfing and stage diving. After that, we come to the Download 2013 show. I also believe that Sid wore something like this at the Monster of Rock in 2013, and this is literally his Point .5 mask. I don't know if this is the exact same copy that he wore for Point .5, but it is the same exact design from the same exact maker, Bob Bassett. So yeah, technically Sid wore his Point .5 mask way before Point .5 came out. Next up, we have the second Bob Bassett mask on the list, and this is also before Point .5. This was worn to the Kerrang! Awards 2013, and I've always really actually liked this mask. It looks like a weird bug-eyed fly and I feel like that fits Sid's persona a lot. Also very reminiscent of a gas mask, just more of a steampunk style, and I don't know, I just think that these work. A lot of people dislike these masks, but I feel like these are about as close to new gas masks as we are going to see Sid wear, not including the throwback masks like the Sonosphere 2012 BCD. All right, and last on the list for the All Hope Is Gone era, we have yet another death mask. This was worn at the Mayhem 2012 meet and greet, and I do believe that this is a a different copy than the one that we saw during volume three. This one appears to be a lot clearer, a lot more translucent, and I'm not sure if that is because this is a different mask with a different paint job, if you will, or if Sid actually had some face paint on during the volume three shoots with his death masks. Once again, I really, really enjoy the look of the death masks. I think that they are super cool, and I would actually like to have a death mask of my own someday. Whew. Point five already? Can you guys believe that we are actually 60 masks into this list already? Time flies when you're listening to my stupid ass voice. All right, so the gray chapter. I guarantee that there's more masks on this list than you think. Let's take a look. All right, so right off the bat for point five, the gray chapter, we have Sid's most used mask, the Bob Bassett mask without a mouthpiece. And this is the one that Sid most commonly used. He would use it with and without a mouthpiece piece for most of the shows. He would come out with the mouthpiece and usually end up removing it a few songs in, but this is the mask with no mouthpiece, which brings us to the mask with a mouthpiece, and this is only one of the multiple mouthpieces that were used. This one is the most common one, and this is the one that you will get if you order one of these masks from Bob Bassett, but you better hope that you got some motherfucking chump change because these masks are not cheap. These are $1,500 from the same maker as Sid's. And while they are fucking awesome, a lot of mask collectors just cannot justify spending that amount on these masks. So next up, we have the alternate mouthpiece. And as you can tell, this one is a lot more leather and a lot less metal. I personally prefer the one before, but luckily he did not use this mask with this mouthpiece that often. And if you guys will notice, this is the mask that he wore prior to Point .5 even coming out. So this is that Bob Bassett piece from the last segment of the All Hope Is Gone masks. Speaking of the last segment, here we have that second copy that he wore, the other Bob Bassett mask. And fun fact, all of the masks on this Point .5 list are going to be Bob Bassett pieces. So this is the fly one from the All Hope Is Gone list that I said that I liked a lot. And again, this one is worn with no mouthpiece, but he did actually have a mouthpiece for this mask as well, which he did use live. Again, still getting some fly vibes off of this. I do personally like it more without the mouthpiece, but hey, this is just a list. My opinion don't fucking matter. 
Moving right along, we have yet another Bob Bassett piece, and this one is some weird scuba diver looking shit. Again, worn with no mouthpiece here, but fear not, he does have a mouthpiece for this mask, and I personally think that it looks better with the mouthpiece. Yet another leather Bob Bassett piece, probably the most unique out of all of the pieces from Point Five, and that is because this one is just a weird mummified looking skull mask. The rest of them were some sort of crazy steampunk gas mask looks, and this one is just a black detailless skull. Moving back into the weirder masks, we have another Bob Bassett piece that kind of looks like this guy. Once again, this came with or without the mouthpiece. This photo shows it without the mouthpiece, and this photo shows it with the mouthpiece. Personally, I like it better with the mouthpiece. And here we have my least favorite Point .5 mask of all time, the Pony Mask. And I think it's pretty self-explanatory why I call it that. It's got this weird mohawk that just looks like a horse mane, and I fucking hate it. With that being said, it's not too often that there's only one mask from someone's entire era that I dislike. So I think Sid did pretty well during the Point .5 era, and I think that these masks are really cool, and also Bob Bassett is just a good company, and I believe that they will make you just about anything from this list, so go hit them up. I'm sure that you'll be able to find them. Bob Bassett. Golly gee willikers, boys, we have made it to the final era. Yep, self-titled through Point .5 are done, which leaves us with only We Are Not Your Kind. And this last one's gonna go by pretty quickly. So before we dive on into that one and find ourselves at the end of the videos, I wanna take a breather, just take a break real quick, and I wanna know from you guys what your favorite Sid Wilson mask of all time is. Go ahead and pause the video, let me know down in the comments what your all-time favorite Sid Wilson mask is, and I will let you guys know mine right now. My personal favorite, Sid Sid Wilson mask of all time is the restrapped C3 mask from the late self-titled early Iowa eras. I don't know why, but there's just something about this mask that I really, really like. I think it's partially due to the fact that it looks so reminiscent of the BCD, which is Sid's most well-known mask, but by the time he got this mask, he had started experimenting with different face paints. So not only did we get the classic Sid Wilson look from the Wait and Bleed and Spit It Out video, but we also got some new gnarly looking straps along with nice new face paint designs underneath. I also really enjoy the fact that he wore this mask for both self-titled and Iowa. You almost never saw that with those masks, and with those two records being my favorite of all time, it's just kind of cool. So, are you guys ready to end this fucking list? I know that I am. It's taken me three days to make this video. So, let's get on into it. The last era, We Are Not Your Kind, Sid Wilson Masks. All right, the last of the last, the We Are Not Your Kind Sid Wilson mask, and there are technically at least three variants of this mask, maybe four, and I will do my best to list them here. First up, we have the promo version. This one appears to be almost completely static. You can barely see Sid's teeth sticking out of the mask, and I don't believe that this mask changes much. This is also the mask that we saw on the Jimmy Kimmel Live performance, and from what you could tell, Sid's mask was not moving. No matter how much he opened his mouth or closed his mouth or whatever, there was no snarling effect on that one, so I'm just gonna call that the static version. It does not move. I believe that the mouth is only open due to the weight of the silicone of the mask itself, so there is that. Next up, there are at least two variations with two different snarling effects that Sid has been seen wearing during the live shows. A lot of people think that the mouth on this mask is controlled animatronically, but I can tell you that that is absolutely not true. There is only one version of the mask that has servos, and that version has not been seen anywhere other than in a music video. These variants are actually just controlled with levers and pulleys inside of the mask that are operated with Sid's mouth. Depending on how far he opens his mouth, the mask will react a little bit differently, and this is no new science. Different mass-produced mask companies have had these for a very long time, and typically any time that you see a Spirit Halloween, you'll see some different variations of this. They have like evil teddy bears, evil jack-o'-lanterns, whatever, and when you open your mouth, the mask raises its eyebrows or lowers its eyebrows and shows its teeth off, so this is basically what Sid's mask is. It's just a much more detailed different version with a normal human face rather than a scary face and wow are these masks unsettling and that brings us to the very last mask on the list the most recent variation of Sid Wilson's we are not your kind mask at least the last one that we have seen and that is the we are not your kind touring mask with missing teeth 
Now, for those of you that don't know, the teeth that you see when Sid does the little snarling effect are actually fake. They are a part of the mask, and Sid's mask has been losing quite a few teeth lately. So, that is where we stand on Sid masks. <sighs> Finally done. Wow. Can't believe we did it. The first and only fully accurate, fully in-depth, definitive Sid Wilson mask list. The entire history of the masks that Sid Wilson wore in Slipknot from his first to his last. And now that we're finally at the end, I want to go ahead and say that I think Sid Wilson probably puts more thought and care into his masks than any other member in Slipknot. Not only does it seem like he pretty much always thinks outside of the box, especially with these new concepts, clearly he was the first person in the band to incorporate animatronics and lights into his masks. He also hooked up with Bob Bassett, who was a mask maker before Slipknot. It's pretty cool to see somebody supporting the artists that are in this community. And not only that, but you're probably not going to find a lot of members of Slipknot that have a number of masks in the same realm as Sid. We are 70-something masks deep on this list, and that is pretty nuts. So I would say that out of all the members of Slipknot, Sid probably cares about masks and the mask community more than anyone else. I could be totally wrong about that, but these are just my observations. It does seem like he puts a lot of thought and care into his masks. And I mean, the dude literally did a definitive Sid Wilson mask list thing as merch. He hooked up with Trash Bag Ghost, super cool dude by the way, and released an entire line of artwork and merch dedicated to the masks that he's had over the years. Pretty fucking rad. So, this has been the first installment of this series, the definitive Slipknot mask history. And yes, we are doing every single member, everybody from Sid to the new guy. Ex-members, new members, you name it, they will be on this list. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video, I hope that you've learned something, and I hope that if you aren't subscribed, you consider subscribing because this is pretty much my life. I know, sad, right? So I'd like to thank you personally for spending this time with me, for watching this video, and until next time, this has been AJ Good at the House of Masks telling you to say no to drugs and alcohol, and we will see you guys later. Thank you.